Do you wanna take control at the kitchen line and win more points than you are right now? Well, this is a video for you. We got Brian here from Pickleball Warriors. We're gonna give you five things that is gonna get you to that next level at that kitchen line. All right, so before we get started, it is essential that we are trying to take time away from our opponent. Taking time away from your opponent creates errors, it puts them out of position so you can attack easier. So how we do that is making sure we're taking the ball as early as we can. So our first tip is making sure that we're contacting the ball as often as we can in front of the kitchen line. So I'm, if there was like an imaginary wall coming up from the kitchen line, I'm making every bit of effort to contact that ball as early as I can. So you'll watch Brian and I, we're gonna try to take the ball as early as we can when we're thinking. So I'm gonna take it out of the air. There, I'm gonna take that out of the air. Take that out of the air. I'm just gonna keep, keep taking it out of the air as much as I can, as long as I can. And then if I have to let it bounce, then I'm gonna take it early as well. So I'm never let, I'm taking it off the rise. Okay, so you can see that we're, the transaction is quick, back and forth, back and forth, because we're both taking it early. We're contacting from our pals maybe like five feet away from each other. But you'll see, now we're gonna hit late, and we're gonna wait till it comes back. The dinking becomes slower and less aggressive, right? So now I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait till it comes back, and I'm gonna hit it, I'm gonna step back, right? I'm kinda waiting for the ball. I'm waiting for it. Now it's just kind of like, now we're just kind of rallying, right? And this is not good because now it gives time, Brian time to be able to set up for the ball, to do what he needs to do to hit the ball back to me. I want to take time, take it early so that he has less time to react and set up for his pal. So he's miss hitting it, he's popping it up, doing things where I can put the ball away or he's making mistakes in the net. All right, so the second tip we have when it comes to being effective at the kitchen line is dinking technique. So a lot of times we get really antsy or we flip our wrists a lot. So what our dinks might look like is snapping our wrist through like this and we either pop the ball up like that and then create a dead dink or I hit it too fast and then Brian can attack the ball, right? So instead of snapping our wrist through the ball, we wanna make sure we lock our wrist in a, in a, in a certain angle and only moving our shoulder through the ball. So our arm is moving in one unit, one motion. This gets you, you not you getting the yips, right? So if we, get, if we have the yips while we're doing our wrist actions, we're gonna be popping the ball up all over the place. But if we're just using our shoulder, this denies us, even if we have the yips, it's a stable pendulum that we can just rely on with a consistent dink. So you'll see when I'm dinking, I'm just moving, I'm locking my wrist in and I'm just moving my shoulder through. Okay, but I am adjusting my wrist every time. You'll see me move my wrist, but then lock it in. Move my wrist, then lock it in. Okay, so you'll see me move my wrist in position, but then before I hit the ball, I'll lock it and then move my arm through the ball versus snap my wrist through the ball. So make sure you're just activating your shoulder through your dinks instead of snapping your wrist. All right, we're on to tip number three, and this is paddle position, which is super crucial. There's a lot of ideas out there with what's the best pal position when you're getting ready for a ball. What I like to do is make sure my pal is open and there's a kind of a hybrid. Sometimes it's on my forehand side, sometimes it's my backhand side, and it's not necessarily always one kind, right? So you'll see my pal move a lot. When I'm centered with Brian though, and I'm dinking back and forth with him, I'm making sure my pal's more centered and open, okay? So you'll see I'm more centered to my body when I'm getting ready. So if he ever speeds it up, I can counter it really quickly instead of having to move to that direction. It's more centered because we're straight ahead. Now if I'm over here to a cross court, it's gonna change a little bit. I'm gonna make sure my paddle's more towards the inside because if he attacks to the center, that's his, that's his safest play. His speed up to the center is safest. If he had speed ups to my left shoulder, he's gonna run out of court because there's that sideline there. So as we see here, I'm gonna get my ready position towards the center, and if he ever speeds it up to my outside shoulder, a couple more, so I'm gonna have ready to the center, and then outside shoulder, that's going out, okay? So I'm not looking to guard this side as much because there's more risk for Brian to attack there than the middle. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna cover his higher percentage side to attack. So when I'm dinking, I'm getting my paddle more to my right side than my left side. 
and vice versa. If Brian's over here, I'm going to protect more my left side because center and leave my right side because the angle, if he speeds it up, is gonna put it out, okay? If he hits a slower speed up or he hits a dink, I'm gonna have time to move my paddle over here or here to be able to get to that ball. But if he hits it too fast, it's going out. So make sure you're moving your paddle and you're following the ball with your paddle. Not too far, the more the angle, the further from your body, but make that kind of hybrid move to follow the ball. That's gonna set you up for success when you read the ball and then you'll be able to contact it more effectively. All right, before we continue to tip four, make sure you smash that like button and subscribe so you don't miss out on any future videos. All right, so that fourth tip is gonna be on footwork. So when we're at this in this kitchen space, we wanna keep our body square to the opponent's side. So making our chest is facing forward. So if Brian's moving me around, I'm stepping to the side laterally, still trying to get the ball in front as much as I can, but it's harder if he's moving me side to side. But I'm trying, it, no matter where he's going with it, I'm trying to keep my body square. So I'm sidestepping, getting early, okay, and not crossing over like this, okay? So if he moves me, I'm not trying to cross over like this. Sometimes you have to because you gotta get a little bit more reach, okay, because you want that shoulder on that side to reach out, but don't make it a habit, okay? But it's not an issue to cross over only until you pop it up. Once you pop it up, that's the issue because then your back's showing and he's able to put it away. I can't get back around to defend fast enough. So you gotta make sure if you do cross over that you hit a good dink, okay? But, so you get that reach, but don't make it a habit to cross over. Try to be open stance so that you're back square to your opponent to receive any kind of speed up or attack. So make sure that that's happening. The second thing with footwork is making sure that we're taking the ball out of the air instead of backing up. Now that's not always the case. Sometimes they hit a good dink and it gets back. So it's okay to pivot sometimes. So in, an example, if he hits a good, a good dink and I pivot back, I gotta make sure I pivot back towards the line again. A lot of people pivot back, but then stay back here and then start dinking from here. So if Brian pulls me out and then hit it, bounces deep and I pivot, hit the dink, I'm gonna get back to that kitchen line, be established, versus backing up and staying back, okay? So do that next time out, you're out playing. All right, the final thing that's gonna win you more points at the kitchen line is the speed up, okay? Now with speed ups, we're gonna talk about when to speed it up and kind of where to speed it up, okay? So when I'm dinking with Brian, the first thing I'm gonna be looking for is to move him around. So how I'm gonna create more space is moving him out wide. So if I can move him out wide and then create, and, and his partner doesn't cover the middle, then I might be able to speed up to the middle and be able to get away with it. So I'm looking to create space between him, him and his partner. If Brian's over on the other side and I'm hitting cross court angles to him, I, maybe I can create a divide between him and his partner in the middle and then speed up to the middle. So that's the first thing you're looking for. Brian come, is gonna come back over here. The next thing I'm looking for is his paddle position. If I'm seeing his paddle position kind of stay low or he's kind of in a lazy, ready position, I'm gonna speed it up high to his shoulders so that he can't get to it really quickly. Uh, specifically, jam him up on his dominant shoulder. So if he kind of has that lazy uh, dink and then his paddle stays low and then I'm, I'm gonna get a good ball, I might go up high to him don't want to hit it out like that, but it's going to be a little slower because I have to go higher, especially with Brian because he's a little bit taller. So let's go again. Let's see if I can get a little bit better speed up here. I'm going to get ready for that ball. Ah, there we go. So that was slow enough. Did it go in? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so it's slow enough. I got him high around the shoulder and then he wasn't able to get his paddle up fast enough. So those are the two things you're kind of looking for, okay? Now, where I'm going for always depends on where's my gaps, where's my openings, and where's the best spot to go on a certain opponent. For Brian, he might be the dominant shoulder, but it, you know, for another opponent, it might be their non-dominant shoulder or low to the hip. Everyone has their certain weaknesses, so you have a whole half game to figure that out and where to go. A lot of players sometimes, even myself, cheat to the middle a lot, okay? And what I do is I cheat to the middle, and so what you should be looking for is being able to speed it up to the line, and I'm not gonna be able to get to that ball, or if I do, I'm gonna be reaching, and I'm gonna miss that backhand into the net. I've gotten caught several times 
because I'm cheating too far to the middle and someone speeds up on the line. So look for people and their weaknesses and their spots that you like to go to and try different spots out. If it doesn't work, maybe think about not going there next time, try a different spot. But it's great, it's a crucial skill to have to speed up to be able to attack, especially when your opponent doesn't miss their dinks. You gotta be able to do that next time you're out playing.